Hello there, it's Linda here from Just For Tummies and I want to talk to you about the link between antacids, powerful antacids called proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole and lanzaprazole and diverticular disease and diverticulitis. But first of all, let's have a look at all the D's of diverticular. So there's diverticular, that's where you have some diverticular pocketing usually found in the large intestine, the large bowel, and usually on the left-hand side of the abdomen, low down in the descending bowel or the zygmoid part of the bowel. Although diverticular pocketing can be found in the esophagus, in the stomach, in the small intestine or small bowel, but that can be quite rare. Normally the pocketing is found in the large bowel and that's just what they look like, little pockets that have, um, on the surface of the um, the lining of the large intestine and some of the pocketing, pocketing is quite shallow and some of them are quite deep, some are quite small, some are quite large. And so that's that's the diverticular, that's diverticulosis. OK, but if someone has a flare up of symptoms, then they are diagnosed as having diverticular disease. If they have an infection, then that of those pockets then that is called diverticulitis and that can be very unpleasant with bloody diarrhea pain high temperature and sometimes people have to be admitted to hospital if they're having a severe diverticulitis attack and they have to be put on iv antibiotics and in some cases they have to have surgery to remove the disease perforated part of their bowel because the diverticular pocketing sometimes one of the pockets can perforate and that can cause sepsis that can be life-threatening so what's the what's the link between antacids ppis and diverticular disease and diverticulitis well there are some studies that indicate long-term regular use of proton pump inhibitors can increase the risk of getting diverticular disease. Now, why would that be? Now, very often I'm contacted by people who, um, who have diverticular disease and who have had a nasty flare up and they want to help prevent an, a further flare up. So very often I will recommend our live bacteria probiotic capsules our digestive enzyme tablets and our omega-3 capsules. I will give them a protocol um, to help prevent any further diverticulitis attacks. I may even get them to carry out a five-day charcoal cleanse to clean out the diverticular pockets. But what's, what's the connection then? So like I say, I'm very often contacted by someone who has diverticular disease and they've had a diverticulitis flare up and they want to prevent another one. And like anyone who contacts me, I ask a few questions. I want to know what their symptoms are, what maybe triggered their symptoms, what their antibiotic history is, what their gut infection, food poisoning history is, their age and their medications. And I can't tell you how many people who contact me wanting help to reduce any further diverticulitis attacks are also taking a regular proton pump inhibitor drug like omeprazole or lanzaprazole and have been taking it for quite a long time. Now, perhaps they're taking the PPI because they have um, acid reflux. Maybe they have esophagitis where they have inflammation in the lining of their esophagus maybe they've been diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus and it's very important that these people carry on taking their PPI certainly if they've got Barrett's esophagus because Barrett's esophagus can be a precursor to esophageal cancer so the last thing you want is the acid in your stomach regurgitating up into your esophagus and burning that delicate lining and changing the structure of those cells that line the esophagus and eventually um, then becoming cancerous. But there is definite evidence to suggest that people who take 
PPIs regularly, long term, are more at risk of developing diverticular disease. And this is because look at what proton pump inhibitor drugs are doing to the digestive system. They are dramatically reducing the amount of stomach acid in the stomach. And one of the functions of stomach acid is to help the proper digestion of food and absorption of nutrients. And we know that regular use of PPIs, regular long term use of PPIs can, can, um, can stop the absorption of certain nutrients, in particular iron and calcium and magnesium. So if PPIs are blocking the uptake of nutrients, then eventually you would kind of assume that that would have an effect on connective tissue in the body and maybe weaken connective tissue if that connective tissue is not getting all of the nutrients it needs for the, um, for the collagen to stay strong. So you would think that, oh, well, maybe in that case, the bowel, the lining of the bowel may become weaker, may become thinner, may be more predisposed to developing diverticular pocketing. We also know that regular long term use of proton pump inhibitors can cause dysbiosis in the gut. And dysbiosis simply means an imbalance of the bacteria, fungi and yeast in the gut. So instead of the dominant strains in the gut being the friendly, uh, health protecting strains, the dominant strains can become the more pathogenic strains of bacteria, fungi and yeast that can cause inflammation in the lining of the bowel wall. And such inflammation can weaken the bowel wall and again predispose it to developing diverticular pocketing. So um, I'm going to put a link in this email to a study um, where they, they talk about the link between proton pump inhibitors and diverticular disease and diverticulitis. But it's just something I want you to think about. And it's one of the reasons um, I put people who suffer with diverticular disease and diverticulitis onto my specific three three supplement program protocol the live bacteria the digestive enzymes and the omega-3 not just to help prevent any diverticulitis flare-ups but to help generally with the health of their digestive system to help balance the gut so it's not dysbiotic and to help remove any inflammation that may be in the gut so it's not weakening the, the walls of the gut where those where the diverticular pocketing can um, can manifest itself so um yeah it's just that i've noticed <laughs> i think kind of over the past couple of years really when people have contacted me and they want help with the with their diverticular disease and you know i asked for a list of the medications and more often than not, you know, a PPI like a meprazole or lansaprazole is popping up each time. So I thought, well, I'm going to look into this because I know that PPIs can block the uptake of certain nutrients and can cause dysbiosis in the gut. So that's a double whammy, really, isn't it? For the for the you know the integrity of the lining of the gut, the fact that that connective tissue that makes up the gut and the gut wall is not receiving all the nutrients it needs to stay strong and healthy, plus the dysbiosis in the gut, which is more kind of localized, I suppose, causing low grade inflammation in the lining of the gut wall, again, making it weaker and causing these bulges to appear, these diverticular pockets to appear. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Uh, but all is not lost, because if you need to take a PPI, then absolutely you must follow your GP's um, advice on this. But you can mitigate the side effects of PPIs with targeted supplements. And as I've said before, that's what makes Just for Tummy stand out. Um, the fact that <laughs> me, my experience over 30 years in helping tens of thousands of people um, with their symptoms 
um, through a dedicated, targeted supplement program um, aimed at their specific symptoms, unique, unique to them to help resolve the symptoms or to help um, maintain the status quo of their symptoms, to prevent flare up of their symptoms, in this case, diverticulitis. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope I've explained that well. Any, anything you're not sure about, just reply to this uh, email. And thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye.